producing more energy with fewer CO2 emissions. This advertising slogan by the company Ava CO2 holds out the promise to solve one of the most pressing problems of our time. In order to achieve this goal, the company has developed a technology for the economical use of hydrothermal carbonization. This technology allows the production of coal from biogenic waste. The company has built its first research facility in the Karlsruhe Rhein Arbor. Today, Ava CO2 receives a shipment of malt spent grains, biogenic residues from a brewery. To find out under which conditions the spent grains can be transformed into bio coal, a process engineer analyzes the material composition. A sample is taken in order to determine the moisture content of the spent grains and the weight of the grains after drying. For this purpose, some portion of the sample is placed into an aluminum bowl and then inserted into a furnace. Inside the furnace, the spent grains are heated up until all moisture has been extracted. From the dry weight, the engineer calculates how much coal he will be able to produce from the spent grains. The process now continues outside. First, the grain is put on a scale in small portions. The weight of each portion is recorded. Then the grain shipment is fed into a pump. It is full steam ahead for the pumps now. For the whole grain shipment is to be processed at once. In this way, the processes can be improved and controlled more easily, since no further materials are added during operation. Now 7 tons of malt spent grains are pumped into the first of three vessels, the mixing tank. Based on the dry weight of the grain, the engineers know that the grain contains only 1.5 tons of solid material. The remaining 5.5 tons are water. Now recycled water gained from previous processes and hot steam are added. Due to the mixing of the substances and the rising pressure in the tank, the material is heated up and pumped into the second vessel. The reactor tank is where the biomass, that is the solid material contained in the spent grains, is actually transformed into coal. But how exactly does this happen? 1.4 tons of hot steam, as well as gases generated as byproducts of the process, caused the pressure to rise to 24 bar and the temperature to go up to 210 degrees Celsius. Under heat and temperature, water molecules are removed from the biomass. What remains is a carbon compound with only a few bonded oxygen and hydrogen atoms, the coal. If the spent malt grains were burned directly, this would be less effective because the carbon content of coal is higher compared to that of spent grains. Therefore, coal reacts much more readily with oxygen and has a higher heating value. One could say that a refining process has taken place. From the 1.5 tons of dry matter biomass that had initially been contained in the 7 tons of spent grains, 1 ton of coal and a half ton of water have been generated. Thus, Ava CO2 has achieved within no more than 5 hours what it takes nature millions of years to achieve. Due to the pressure in the reactor tank, the coal and the water are forced into the third vessel. The purpose of this outlet buffer tank is to reduce temperature and pressure and to prepare the coal and the water for discharge from the tank. The remaining water will be subsequently recycled and the part of it will be used in the next process. When the coal and the water are discharged from the tank, they still have a temperature of about 90 degrees Celsius and must be further cooled down in a basin. The water-coal mixture is then pumped from the collecting basin to a filtering press. Here each filter cloth is fixed to a kind of hanger. In the plant a large number of such hangers are suspended in a row. During filtering the liquid is forced through the cloths under pressure. As a result, the water flows out of the filters at the sides and runs into a gutter. A major benefit of mechanically dewatering the coal is that there is no need to supply additional heat energy. Due to its hydrophobic, that is water repellent properties, coal is especially easy to filter. Ava CO2 can remove 75% of the water by using this purely mechanical process, thus saving up to 60% of energy compared to the thermal drying of the biomass. In this filter press the filters are moved one by one by a shifting device. The coal plates simply drop off and are collected in a container. In a next step, an Ava CO2 employee prepares the coal for transport. This also includes weighing the barrels. In addition, the coal is treated with gaseous nitrogen in order to prevent the spreading of microorganisms. 
Currently, Ava CO2 is engaged in the production of biocoal from various biomass residues for research purposes and is investigating how the process water can be recycled in a more cost-effective manner and how the dewatering process and the calorific value of the coal in the process reactor can be optimized. At present, the heat value of coal made from spent grains already amounts to 30 MJ per kilogram, which is higher than that of lignite. Thus it can replace fossil fuels and help to save CO2, just like the carbon produced from digested sewage sludge. With a calorific value of only 13 MJ per kilogram, however, sewage sludge is required in larger amounts. The main interest here lies in disposing of a waste product in a sensible and responsible way. For sludge contains not only bacteria and other microorganisms, but also heavy metals such for example zinc, which is why in Switzerland its use as a fertilizer in agriculture has been forbidden since 2006. Similar trends can be observed in Germany. Therefore, the sludge is incinerated, which, however, results in a loss of phosphate, an important plant nutrient which is becoming increasingly scarce worldwide. Thanks to a new technology developed by Ava CO2 on the basis of hydrothermal carbonization, up to 80% of phosphate can be recovered from the sewage sludge, in an economically viable manner. Change of scene. The municipal sewage plant winter tours Switzerland. Sludge coal has just been delivered from Karlsruhe. The sole purpose of the mono incineration plant is to dewater and to dispose of sludge. Up to now, the sewage plant has used methane gas in the combustion process. With an on-site pilot plant, Ava CO2 is now testing to what extent the municipal utility could save gas and, consequently, energy. In the plants of Ava CO2, all processes will be automated. In performing the combustion tests, however, manual labor is still required. Ava CO2 employees shovel the coal into buckets and dump it onto a screw conveyor. There, the coal is mixed with the sludge and at the same time conveyed to the fluidized bed incinerator. In the incinerator, the sludge is kept burning by means of the coal, thus replacing the methane gas. In future, the gas would be required for initial spark only. Thus, it would be possible to dispose of sludge without causing additional CO2 emissions by using the coal produced by Ava CO2.